All right, guys, if you're thinking about moving to Costa Rica, living in Costa Rica, and even if you're eventually going to get your residency, apply for residency, whether you do it sooner or later, you will have to leave the country no matter what for at least, let's say, six months, a year, year and a half, maybe even two years or longer. Uh, residency does not, no matter what they tell you, <laughs> it's not that quick, right? Uh, so you people, this is uh, going to be good for uh, you people from Germany, Canada, the United States, Australia. You people that are thinking about living here, but you're, you're kind of new to the whole Costa Rica thing. I'm going to give you the 101, a few hacks on being a perpetual tourist, crossing the border, coming back, that kind of thing. All right, but first... Hey man, I'm Michael Allen, TravelCostaRicaNow.com. TravelCostaRicaNow.com is a travel agency. Go to TravelCostaRicaNow.com and fill out the four-minute form and you'll be that much closer to the vacation of a lifetime. We're like you, having best friends who live in Costa Rica, who know Costa Rica, totally hooking up your Costa Rica vacation. And I'd appreciate a subscribe because I just lost a bunch of... <laughs> A bunch of them. But man, if you don't want to subscribe, maybe you could donate, man. Maybe I'm getting to the point where I'll have no subscribers soon. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just touch on that for one like one minute. All right. All right. So if you, if, if you weren't at the party or if you haven't been involved in the party uh, this past Sunday, uh, what, what's today? This is, uh, yikes, August. I know it's Thursday, maybe the 16th. I don't know. Anyway, this past Sunday, I made a video that was supposed to be about I was hoping Costa Rica wouldn't mandate vaccines. I put a, a little bit of politics in it. A lot of you guys didn't like my politics or my thoughts or my uh, opinions. Hey, man, that's cool. Uh, not, not a problem. Uh, I lost a lot of subscribers. I mean, a lot. For me, I'm a small channel. So, you know, uh, I lost a lot. So I made another video, what was it, I, I put it up yesterday morning about, I, I kind of said I was apologizing to the unsubscribers, which I really didn't do, that was a sarcastic uh, thumbnail, <laughs> and I lost a hundred more subscribers, man, a hundred more subscribers. Now, that's cool, man, I'm a big boy, right, I'm a big boy, I don't, I don't, uh, you know, the only thing that I think is interesting is, man, so 600 videos, 600 videos about living and traveling in Costa Rica. 99.9% .9 of those are about living and traveling in Costa Rica. And if they have to do anything with COVID, it's usually as it applies to Costa Rica and its entry requirements. There's been very few times. There's been a handful. I've talked about COVID, my own kind of views before, but not much. And I, I still offer some of the best perspective out there. You know, I'm not that, I don't, I don't, necessarily say what the law is i tell you what really happens down here and as it you know the law how it really goes what's true what's not true what they say on, on the internet and all that so and i've lived down here a long time i just thought it was strange that people would throw the baby out with the bathwater just because you don't uh, agree with my skepticism of covid right it's all good man i'm a big boy hey man let's get to it all right, so you people that aren't really familiar with Costa Rica too much, uh, that are thinking about living here, and that's a, I get the emails. I know where you're from. You're from Germany, you're from Canada, and United States, obviously, and Australia, just to name a few, man. I get the emails. And you're just starting to do your research, and you're, and you're figuring out that you can only stay in Costa Rica for up to 90 days at a time. Uh, you have to leave, you have to come back, and there's this, this uh, travel insurance. Do I have to have the vaccine? How does that work? Is how expensive is it? So I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the 101, break it down for you. Got a couple hacks, not great, but a couple. And you people that live here, I would love to uh, you know chime in, man. Chime in on the comments. Okay, first of all, what's a perpetual tourist? A perpetual tourist is is someone like uh, me that that lives here. But I'm not a resident. I'm not like legal in that sense. So they have this, you could call it a loophole, you can call it anything you want. But you can cross over to Nicaragua or Panama or fly to the United States and you can come back, you renew, you renew your passport. Now people that live here just tend to go up to the border, turn like right back around within a couple hours, get their passport stamped, they're good for another 90 days. That's what a perpetual tourist is. Now, I have friends, this is no joke, I've got, uh, D'Angelo's still a perpetual tourist, 15 years. I have another friend, 25 years as a perpetual tourist. I did it for 12 or 13. I only didn't 
I only stopped it and got my residency because of my business. I wanted to get le legit. That's the only reason. I, I could have been a perpetual tourist uh, to this day as well. So, uh, But I got a lot of friends that do it. Not just one, not just two. A lot of friends that have lived here a long time and they leave every 90 days. It used to be really fun, by the way. We used to make it a party. It was like a party bus up to Nicaragua. Now, um, so like I said, regardless if you're going to, let's say you're in Germany and you want to, you're, you're, you see your country going south or you think it's going south and you want to make, you're, you're thinking Costa Rica and you're going, gosh, we have to leave every uh, uh, 90 days. Um, we should just become a resident there. Uh, you can, you can do that, but you are going to have to leave, uh, for a time, at least, uh, like I said earlier, you will have to leave for a time and do this, uh, back and forth. So now, first of all, if you're new to this research and homework, the place you do not want to go, listen to me, this, this is, this is real. And I, I think I can get some backup on people who live here as well. Do not get your information through Facebook, uh, Costa Rica groups, the gringos. They are the most meanest bitch. I don't know what their problem is, but you, you go to the group, you're just, Hey man, you're new. And you talk about perpetual tourism and they freaking eat you up like you're a second class citizen, man. They, they pass on information. They pass on misinformation. They give you, they tell you terrible stories. They make you feel like you're the lowest of lows. I don't know what it is, but it's true. Actually, that's why I'm not on any of those Facebook groups. None of them. There's good blogs out there. People that give, uh, you know, solid information without their like chiming in on their own personal stuff. So do not go to Facebook or you're going to be very disillusioned on what you should, uh, uh, which course of action, because some people, Hey, I want to be, I want to be legit. I want to be a resident. I don't want to be perpetual tourism gives me a little bit of freedom. I can leave anytime, but it, it is fraught with disadvantages for, for sure. I mean, I was it for, I used to get, dude, I would get stressed. Seriously. I would get stressed every time I did it. Because, I don't know, I guess I felt guilty about my past or something. I thought that any day they're going to go, we know what you did and you're going to be... <laughs> you're going to... I don't know. It was in my head. It never was a problem. But I was always stressed. I did the same thing at the airport. I don't know why. There was no reason for it because nothing ever did happen. So, what... Um, you're going to hear the worst stories there. You're going to hear a lot of bad stories on Facebook. People are going to uh, tell you bad stories of why you shouldn't do a perpetual tourism, uh, tourist. But I can tell you what they don't tell you. For every bad story and the person that's telling it, they usually have an axe to grind. And there's usually something to, uh, with them being a dick at the border. There's also something about that they didn't have all the paperwork and they weren't prepared when they were doing it. So when you throw those things in, that's how bad stories happen. Usually if you are prepared and you have all the paperwork, usually you are good. And I did say usually, all right? But the worst stories come from, you know, these people, they're pissed, then they're pissed, right? Now, um, it's always been, when you go up to Nicaragua or Panama, it's always been somewhat arbitrary what they're going to do. Uh, it it, it kind of... It just kind of depends on who you get at the window. But if you have your papers, if you have, if you're showing your return ticket, you know, and it's within 89 days and you have all your stuff, they're usually pretty good and you get stamped. It used to be back in the day, uh, even like, you know, five years ago that even if they stamped you at 30 days, you could still say 90. You could still say 90. You just go do it again and they stamp you 90. Times have changed, right? Um, where are we at? So COVID's kind of screwed everything up. It has. It's kind of screwed everything up. It's made everything more complicated and it's definitely made it more expensive. So you're going to have to plan accordingly. You, you know, there's only so many things. If you don't want to get, for instance, if you don't want to get the vaccine, you're going to have to get traveler's insurance. That's it. That's the way it is now. Hopefully that'll change. I don't see that happening anytime soon. Um, so you're going to have to account and budget for your leaving every three months. I'll, I'll tell you the cheaper routes and, you know, ways you can uh, do that. But, uh, um, you're going to have to leave and you're going to have to budget that 
Because if you're, especially if you're going for your residency, you have to show that you're being legal. You have to leave every three months. If you overstay your 90 days and you're trying to get your residency, that actually could stop you from getting your residency because you weren't following the rules. So remember that. Um, Panama has always, since I've been here, had the worst stories. When you hear really bad border crossing stories, it's almost always from Panama. Not that Nicaragua doesn't have them. I'm just saying that most of the time it's Panama stories. Those are the ones, they're even more arbitrary down there. They almost make shit up as they, uh, um, they, they go. And I, I got to tell you, I know there's a million reasons, good reasons to move to Panama. And I'm definitely not telling you that you should live in Costa Rica. But the reason I could never live in Panama is because the people don't like us. Okay, there's an exception, I'm sure. Exceptions. But for the most part, they have contempt for gringos and they don't care. They don't want they don't give you the time of day. They barely can look at you and they have contempt. And it's a it's a truth. It's not a stereotype, it's true. So I don't really want to be in a country that <laughs> doesn't really want me. So that's my thing. But they treat you this a lot of them treat you the same way at the border. You know, they have a little bit of contempt for you, and if they're in a bad mood, hard to say what they're gonna tell you that you need or don't need. So a lot of that is just depends on the window you go to, you know, and that's the problem because if you just knew what you needed to do, have to have it, you would have it. But sometimes they they throw uh, they throw you curveballs. Uh, I do have a little theory on that. I would go to the oldest person you can find at a window, and I kind of look at it like. And okay, in the U.S., there's cops that have been doing their job for 20 years, and then there's new cops. Well, those new cops tend to, you know, they, they want to exert their power and, and their control over you because they just got the badge. They want to kind of show you what's up, show you who's who, what's what. The older guy's been around, man. He's usually pretty easy. Now, is this always true? No. But it's a theory, so I would go to the older person that's been around. He knows the game, he knows the thing, and he doesn't have, he's not trying to exert, you know, his power over you necessarily. Um... So, with Panama, you need to show um, you need to show a negative COVID test within forty eight hours of of going over. Okay, so uh, you also need to show, and this is this doesn't always happen, uh, five hundred dollars in cash or like you have it on a credit card or something. Uh, I've never, I don't think I've had a friend that ha had to do that, but supposedly they've kind of started that anew. And again, it depends on the window you go to. So you got to show you have some money when you go over there. This, uh, this, this one is, if this is true, this is also new. And I'm sure this is just as arbitrary. You uh, show a minimum two-day prepaid hotel reservation. So they want you to spend money there. You just can't go back and forth is what they're trying to say. Although you can. Okay. Um, and then you got to have a, a return ticket. You know, you got to show your return ticket to, you know, Costa Rica, the States, or whatever. But they may ask you for that stuff, and they may not ask you for that stuff. Now, I have a friend. You know, this is interesting, or I found it interesting. She is not into the COVID testing, not into the vaccines. I'm not arguing that. But she's not into them, and she tries to find whatever way she can do to get around them. And she found a way. So what she does, she buys a ticket to Panama, flies into Panama City, never leaves the airport never leaves the Panama airport. So, stays there for three hours, shops in the airport, has lunch in the airport, and gets right back and goes to Costa Rica. She has to, there's no COVID test because you're in transit. You're in transit, you're, you haven't stopped. You're not leaving the airport. So there is none of that COVID testing stuff, all right? Kind of a hack, kind of a hack because a lot of times some of these things are more important for your stress level than the money even. So to her, getting that, that ticket, that round trip ticket, you know, to uh, Panama and back, you still got to show your return ticket. We'll get into that in a second uh, so you can uh, understand it. But she flies to Panama, Panama City, stays in the airport for three hours and has a flight going back to Costa Rica. And there is, although Panama requires a COVID test, but she's in transit. She's from one airport to another. So she doesn't have to do the COVID test 
and she doesn't have to do the vaccine coming back into Costa Rica. So I thought that was interesting. She's done it three times. The last time I asked her, it was just August 27th, and she's done it three times. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, and she said it, for her, it was a lot less stressful than any of the COVID testing stuff and the vaccine stuff. Okay, Nicaragua. Nicaragua, you know, that, that was our, you know, that's where we're going. Now, Piñas Blancas is the big border crossing. That's on the, that's on the northwest side. That's the huge, uh, the bigger frontera or the border crossing. And we used to do that one. But we have a closer one in, at Los Chiles, which is more on the north uh, east side. Uh, not as many people, a little bit easier, a uh, little bit more low key, um, just a, a little bit more less stressful uh, experience, I think. Uh, Nicaragua requires a 72 hour, within 72 hours, a negative COVID test. The thing with Nicaragua, their bark can be worse than their bike. They can scare the bejesus out of you. But normally, it always works out in your benefit. You get scared, you're thinking, man, I'm not, I'm not crossing. They kind, of, they kind of fuck with you, actually. They can. And it's happened. But it doesn't, nothing ever really happens. So, you might get scared crossing there. It might cause a little stress, but you normally end up uh, doing whatever it is you're trying to do, going back and forth. So, to me, the Los Chiles is by far the best, less stress. And it might, all, it, it might even be um, worth <laughs> traveling out of your way to not do the Panama land border. Um, that just, I don't know, man, it's just always been bad. But So Nicaragua was probably the easiest. It's going to be the cheapest. Yes, there's an exit fee. I think it's $10. Uh, you go over. And, and so you, uh, it's about a 50-minute uh, bus ride to, in Nicaragua once you get stamped in. Uh, you can kind of turn around. They know that game. Uh, I've had people pay them off before to, to look the to say stamp me back. I'm not saying you should do that. Uh, most people just go ahead and go into uh, the, the town about 50 minutes away is San Carlos. You can get cheap things over there. Want to get some rum, maybe get some uh, 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 toiletry stuff, toothpaste and stuff. It's cheaper. You know, that kind of thing. So, and that's what we used to do. We used to go over there and party <laughs> for lunch, you know, and then, then we're back in Costa Rica that evening. So that's, that's the easiest, to me, that's the easiest and probably cheapest one. But again, this whole COVID thing is kind of, you know, is messing things up because everyone's kind of new at what they're, they're doing. So uh, what else? So you're coming back into Costa Rica from wherever. You need that health pass. Need to fill out that health pass. That's the QR code, and you're either going to need traveler's insurance if you don't want the vaccine, or the approved vaccines, which are those four: Johnson Johnson, Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca. And uh, I thought this was interesting. Tell me, I think this is true, but I'm not quite sure. I had a friend that actually had her um, her uh, vaccines were given here in Costa Rica. She lives here, but she is a perpetual tourist. They weren't going to accept her vaccines from here. They were telling her it needed to be from the United States. Now, they did let her in. You know, she was able to do it, but uh, I'm not sure if that's a thing or if it was an arbitrary thing or what. But uh, maybe you guys know and you could uh, comment on that. So I don't know if um, the vaccine card, if the vaccines get to be, have you seen that card? Have you seen that little cardboard piece of paper and the little scribbles of this and the doctor? I would never tell you to do that. Never. I know what I'd be doing, you know, whatever, but uh, with the, uh, that vaccine business and stuff. So get the vaccine or whatever, but if you get your card, obviously you don't have to pay for the traveler's insurance. Now, remember the traveler's insurance has to be for the amount of time you're going to be in Costa Rica, which is for 90 days. So the good thing about that is if you have the traveler's insurance for 90, 89 days or whatever, they're going, to, they're going to give you your 90 days. I mean, how can they not? Um, they will, even if they act like they won't. They will. You can fight them. Be nice. Be nice. But you can, you can argue a bit. Um, yeah, so if you don't have the vaccine, you need the traveler's insurance. 
And I don't know if that's, you know, it does get a little bit expensive. Now, remember, you need to show when you come back to Costa Rica, not only the health pass and either the vaccination or the travel insurance, you need to show your leaving ticket, right? It just can't be the travel insurance for 90 days. You have to show again that you are leaving Costa Rica within the 80, 89, 88, 90 days. Now, there's this thing about the bus ticket. People go, oh, the bus ticket doesn't work. Yes, it does work. How can somebody tell you, what, you have to be rich and always be on a plane? You can't travel by bus to Nicaragua? I would, I would, I would be pissed about that. So anybody that tells you the bus ticket d doesn't work, something else goes with that story. Something else goes with that story. Going by bus to Panama or Nicaragua is legitimate. And it's, you know, so go to Tika Bus, Go to Tika bus and maybe get a, I think they do it the same way as the plane even, you know, it's like um, uh, non-refundable -ref uh, tickets. You can change it so you don't use it, you change it or whatever. But the bus ticket is a cheap option of saying you're leaving again without the plane ticket and you can use it. There's no way that you could, I would get pissed. Like if I was at the airport and, and they're going, well, you're leaving in 90 days, right? Yes, here's my bus ticket. I'm sorry, sir, we don't accept that. Oh, you, you're going to pay for my plane ticket? You don't know my budget? Come on, man. The bus ticket works. Uh, the, uh, what my friends are doing basically is going to Mexico. Um, Mexico doesn't uh, mandate anything. You don't need a vaccine. You don't need a negative COVID test. You just go to Mexico and they've been going to Cancun. Uh, can be pretty cheap. Uh, you can find cheap tickets. Uh, D'Angelo's been over there twice now to Cancun. I have other friends that have gone to Cancun. Again, it all has to do with travel insurance, or no, I'm sorry, negative COVID testing and um, not having to have the vaccine or any of that. So Mexico is a, seems to be a pretty good option too. And uh, with the plane, um, it's not super expensive. And again, if you can't do this, if you're like, well, Mike, over time, it gets pretty expensive. Well, then maybe you shouldn't be here. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you on that, man. If it doesn't work for you, that's the way it is right now in the world. And you have, this is the way it is. So if you can't afford that plane ticket, that bus ticket, that traveler's insurance, because you don't want the better, whatever it is, I'm not sure what to tell you. All right, guys, I don't know if that's uh, created more uh, questions than answers. Um, I'm ho I'll am try to uh, put it in the description, maybe a little bit more written out uh, so it's understand. I know uh, this uh, confuses a lot of people because there's, I don't know, it just seems to. And because, again, all the misinformation out there about it. Um, all I can say is trust somebody that has been doing it 15 years, right? All right, guys. Michael Allen. Dude, subscribe, man. I need, I need to catch back up. All right, guys. I'm Michael Allen, TravelCostaRicaNow.com. Peace, guys. Hope it helps. Things are going to pop up. My videos, if you're thinking about living or traveling anywhere, you should do your homework and research. What better way to start than my videos? Just don't, don't, uh, don't hit the videos where I'm talking about my skepticism about how COVID's being done. And then maybe I can keep you a while.